Kelly. Hey, Geese Takalakis. How, how are, are you? Uh, <laughs> oh, we both collision. just want to know how each other are. <laughs> we're so interested in the feelings, and we have a lot of feelings today. A lot of feelings today. Feelings of sadness, feelings of joy, feelings of perspective, feelings of introspection. Lots Happy of to be breathing the air. <laughs> yes. Happy to be breathing and having lungs that feel good. Exactly right. Yes. So what are you feeling today, Guy? Um, I don't know. Reflective, I guess. You know, we've, as we'll talk more about, it's wild time to be alive. It is a wild time to be alive. And one of the things I've been thinking about for this episode was how we can incorporate a song into the intro, because that's one of the things that we're oh so good at. <laughs> uh, it's so true. We have to do some singing for our final episode here. Yes. Yeah, your final episode with me. And uh, so in light of that, one of the songs I was thinking of was, I don't know if anybody else out there is a fan of Last Man on Earth, the now defunct show. But I loved that show. And one of the songs that Will Forte would sing all the time is Closure, 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 Closure. Anyway. How fitting. <laughs> that is the perfect song for this episode. Yes. We're going to get a little closure and move into the next beyond. Money makes a world go round. It makes a world go round. Money makes a world go round. Welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing with your hosts, Key Sakalakis and Kelly Street, teaching you how to promote, market, and make fat stacks for your legal practice here on Legal Talk Network. And welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Before we get started, we want to thank our sponsor, Nexa, formerly known as Answer One, is a leading virtual receptionist and answering service provider for law firms. Learn more by giving them a call at 800-267-9371 or online at www.nexa.com. All right, Guy Sakalakis, here we are. Today, we are talking about marketing in this new world that we have. We are talking about how your business can respond to COVID-19. And we are talking about remote work. And we are talking about your new chapter. Yes, my new chapter, which has to do with remote work. <laughs> Perfect. Well planned. Yes. Yes. So uh, if anybody else has listened to our other podcast, Clienting, you have already heard that I have left the nest of Attorney Sync and gone out to become a business partner in my next venture, which is called Work Well Wherever. It is a remote work and uh, remote HR consulting firm. And uh, we just uh, help companies deal with going remote, whether you had already started to do it or have to do it now. There you are. That's what I'm doing. And congratulations to you on your new venture. Very exciting. And, um, you know, certainly as a thing that we've been talking about a lot, no shortage of demand for figuring out how to work remotely uh, these days and these, these uncertain times of infection. Yeah. <laughs> the infection. <Yes. laughs> pandemic. <laughs> the pandemic. Um, you know, and, that's, and we've yeah, obviously, I think it's, no secret here, it's been on everybody's mind, whether you're a business owner or, or not, um, dealing with the new uh, realities of the COVID environment. And so, you know, let's start there. What are you talking about with folks about remote in general? Like, what are some of the big things that you hear come up a lot with running a business remotely? Yeah, th oh, that's a good question. So, um, so my business partner has had the the company's been going for a year already, and so really the shifts that she has seen are companies thinking about it, companies preparing to all of a sudden everybody has to be suddenly remote. And so for me, in the last couple of weeks since joining on board, we've really done just a lot of okay, where are you now? The first few weeks of panic and of going, oh my gosh, we suddenly have to transition our law firm to being fully remote and figuring out security and systems and all of that stuff and homeschooling and everything that's involved there. 
to getting through that little bit of panic time to now, okay, this is going to be the reality for a while. And so what things can you put in place now that are going to help keep your business open and your doors open? And so there are, there are lots and lots of interesting, um, interesting things out there. You know, we're doing templates for here's how you get started on your remote work plan. And here are some tools that you can think about. And also trying to make sure that people aren't getting overwhelmed with all of a sudden you need to do everything because you don't right away. Yeah, I think those are some good points there. And, you know, the part of the conversation that always keeps coming up and much of the we kind of think about it the same way that uh, you just outlined it is uh, number one priority has to be how can I continue to deliver service to clients? Yeah. Because if you can't do that, then yeah. nothing else from a client development standpoint is really going to matter. You know, you can stay top of mind. Uh, you can put some things out there. But if your virtual firm is or your remote firm is closed, can't provide service, then, you know, client development takes a back burner. So one of the, the a couple of the big ones that we talk about, and you know, I was kind of throw some of these ideas out. We you know we've been talking a lot about this stuff. One is: is are you making it easier for your clients and potential clients to be able to actually interact with you, whether you use Zoom or the phone or Google Hangout or Meet or whatever? You know, having a presence where they can actually interact with you is has to be priority number one. Yeah. If you didn't already have an online calendar planner and online appointment booker, that's, I mean, that's one of the beginning keys is just getting some time on there when people can make sure to get on your schedule, hook it up with your Zoom, or if you aren't using one of those services, even your FaceTime on your Apple phone, just getting something so you can have some sort of interaction that appears to be face-to-face and they know they can schedule that time with you. It's as you always say, Gee, it's table stakes. <laughs> and if they table weren't already stakes. doing it. Yeah. And I'll, you know, yeah. my, um, just to kind of throw out my, uh, what we do, we use Calendly, integrates really nicely with Zoom, integrates nicely with, uh, we use Google Calendar, um, Google Sweep. So there's one idea, you know, the Acuity, there's a million, if you just search for calendaring, uh, scheduling software, there's literally a million. Do you have any preferences in that world or? Um, Calendly and Acuity are the top, definitely the top two because they integrate with so many different things and they're just, they're what people are used to. They're really user friendly and they're not super expensive. Yeah. Another thing that always comes up in this conversation is make sure that you're making it easier for your clients to actually pay you. So, you know, if you're, if you took checks and that was the only way people could pay you, you might be reconsidering that with something either like law pay or head notes so people can actually pay you. Just keep the lights on. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just everything can be transitioned online because, Guy, we've talked to virtual firms who were doing this months and years ago. There have been lawyers who had their firm fully online who were working with clients in other states because they lived in a state that they weren't actually barred to practice in. And so this has all been possible. It's just taking a step back, looking at kind of the like five essential areas of things. How are clients going to pay you? How are clients going to talk to you and schedule time with you? And then how are your employees or associates that you might have? How are they going to communicate with you? Just all of these little areas that you can do it all online. You can do it easily. It's just a matter of taking a step back and looking at those things. Yeah. And you know, once you have those, once you're able to deliver the essential part of the service, I think the next thing to be thinking about, we get this question all the time, is should we be marketing, advertising um, in this time? And, um, you know, look, I... It's a... One of these blanket type questions, probably not the right question, but, you know, one of the big concerns is, is that does it come across as tone deaf or inconsiderate when people are literally getting sick and dying and losing loved ones to be marketing law practice? And, and my view of this is, and again, it's similar in the context of like that really this environment is just an acceleration of things we've been talking about a long time is that if by marketing you mean being available, answering questions, providing uh, support, being a shoulder to cry on, listening providing your expertise on a an intersection of some of these new issues that people are facing in this environment with your law practice, then I think the answer is yes, you should be marketing. Is this a great time to uh, plaster the internet with a free divorce lawyer consultation uh, <laughs> ad? Maybe not. Um, 
But I think that my big point here is, and, and again, I we've we've had this conversation a lot, but this this concept of leading with empathy, being grateful that you still can provide service and help people. I think marketing in that context is, uh, you know, people need you now more than they've needed you ever in some contexts. Yeah. I mean, this, this has not gone away. We've just been talking about that. We're, you know, we've been for most parts of the country, we've been in lockdown for a month or more now, or, you know, maybe a little bit less, but around that time. And we don't know when it's going to end. We don't know when it's going to go away. And so life needs to kind of start getting back to normal and some of the things and continuing to do your marketing. You you mentioned divorce lawyers maybe shouldn't be like, hey, come, you know, get a free consultation now. But what you can do is what some of the firms I've seen are doing out there, which is, hey, how to keep your marriage together during quarantine or how to co-parent during quarantine. Because I actually know of families who, um, I mean, hey, I'm in a co-parenting situation. And so we're, you know, we're dealing with it really, I think, really smoothly. But I have seen other families where, the kids are staying at one house or the other for weeks and now a month at a time. And that's really challenging. So maybe shifting your marketing messaging to fit the times is just one of the ways to get through this and stay top of mind. Yeah, exactly. And, and that, I, you know, it's, um, it's the type of thing where we, we've been having these conversations for a long, long time about how your marketing needs to uh, meet who your potential clients are and what they're dealing with. And at the end of the day, even though some of the specific issues that they're dealing with uh, might be much more related to COVID-19, at the end of the day, the fundamentals of marketing messaging still remain the same. Who are your potential clients? What is on their mind? How can you help them? How are you uniquely qualified to help them? And if you if you run your messaging through that kind of filter, I think you'll find, I mean, I think you gave some great examples. You know, we see people are dealing with uh, financial issues. So uh, bankruptcy uh, is going to be a topic. There are going to be issues related to work. So employment issues related to whether it's from contracts or comp or uh, whether it was reasonable for an employer to stay open. I mean, there are so many different practice areas that are touched by this. So anyway, I think that I think we've I think we've articulated that one. The other big one that comes out of this is this idea. It's more of a business question of like, should I be pulling marketing dollars back? And, and again, this is the type of thing that I can't really answer that without knowing a lot more about where you are and your goals and your you know, long-term financial planning. But I will say this, there are a lot of firms that recognize that this is also an opportunity because you see things like firms uh, are pulling back, which creates a vacuum so that there's going to be uh, more market share to be had. And, uh, you know, Sadly, there are firms that are going to fail. But again, if you're in a position to be able to strategically plan for making it through this and beyond it, uh, this is a time of great opportunity for those firms that are willing to take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I 100% agree with that. And if if you are able to maintain and to keep going through this time, absolutely. Keep the budgets, keep something going. And uh, another one of the things I was thinking about when it comes to continuing to do marketing and stuff is just making sure you're updating all of your information too of, hey, these are these other hours we're actually open now. And are updating your website to say we're taking remote appointments and having a little header at the top that's just communicating with potential people because as you know as we've talked about there are so many practice areas that are your messaging and what you might be talking about with clients is pivoting right now and so just making sure that people know they can still get a hold of you they can still talk to you they still have access to you and i love that you mentioned that spends could be a little bit, there's some opening in certain areas because for clients who had, or for clients, for law firms who had a healthy financial picture going into this, this could potentially be a good time to take advantage of some extra marketing spend. Yeah. And, and um, you know, again, I think the other thing that I always come back to is, is that you have to plan for us pulling through this because if, if you're not planning for that, then you're basically planning for the apocalypse, right? You're, yeah. <laughs> there's no, you're, there's no business and marketing and client development and practicing law take a back seat if you're not looking at this from the from the uh, standpoint of people are still going to need 
your services and uh, having you know, business continuity planning. But you know that's a whole other topic, and I'm I'm reticent to. I I hope people that are listening don't say, oh, you know, I heard you say, you know, keep spending full steam ahead on marketing. Well, I, you know, there's a lot of uh, unknown in there. You know, have you solved the problems about being able to continue to service clients? You know, where are you on your next quarter budget planning, uh, at least? Um, if you haven't had those, this is a great time to to evaluate those things and build them. If you haven't, if you don't have them, um, but the sad thing is that you see is is that people react with fear in this environment, which is natural. But if you don't push against that instinct, you know, fear drives a lot of bad decision making. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things I questions I have for you is, you know, I've seen some of the lawyers that I follow on LinkedIn or social media that they're, they're kind of adding a bit more of a sprinkle of personal experience or personality than they, than they normally would have. How do you see marketing and what law firms are putting out there? Do you see that changing now in this kind of environment? You know, it's funny because it's in the same thing. I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but it's really just accelerating some of the things we've been talking about forever, right? So we've been talking about you know, bringing your human to work, letting more of your personality show, giving a peek behind the scenes of what's going on at your firm, sharing more of your personal interests and the, and the causes that you're passionate about. And I think that this environment has accelerated a lot of that because we are, you know, taking meetings at home with kids and pets. <laughs> and uh, you can hear my co-working toddlers uh, probably running behind me throughout this recording. But um, the point being is, is that we're all in this together and we're all dealing with these things. And I do think that it has helped uh, nudge people in a direction of being more comfortable with sharing some of that, which I think is a, a positive thing. And, you know, again, I think that that's one of the things we talk about a lot is, is that people have a lot of anxiety about uh, having, you know, having to take meetings where there's some distract, there's some at home distractions. And, um, you know, the thing I've, my just personal experience, like there are meetings that I've been on where I've been concerned about that. A lot more of the time, the person I'm in the meeting with is like, oh my gosh, like, let me see your toddler. And so it like becomes about that where I was like very concerned about it. And the other thing that I think is a a thing to think about is, is if, if people are like having a very negative reaction to your personal life and the impact of being having to be at home and trying to make it through this, they might not be the kind of person you want to be interacting with anyway. And so anyway, I would Too just put true. that out there, right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, is that is that the kind of client you want who's going to be like, excuse me, can you keep your one-year-old away from you right now? I know they just learned to walk, but make sure that they're not in the room. You know, that's... Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I think, you know, setting those expectations, right? Like, obviously, there are certain, you know, because I know some lawyers are going to listen to this and be like, well, yeah, but uh, there's confidentiality issues. And, and yeah. of course, having those conversations, you need to be, that's another good point is, is to be able to create space wherever you're working, that you can have reasonable diligence and making sure that you know, those confidences are protected. So not every call is appropriate for uh, significant others and toddlers should yeah. be uh, walking around. But I, but I, I think just to the original point that you made, which is people are letting a little bit more of who they are shine through just from the nature of the environment. And again, I think if you look at it constructively, this is a, a good accelerator for sharing more and putting more of a human face uh, on the, you know, the faceless lawyer that people are scared to engage with. Yeah. Yeah, there are definitely, I mean, there are a lot of things that I'm worried about the long-term impact and, or, and even short-term impact for what's going on right now. But there are a lot of things that I'm also excited about and the sharing connections and being able to show more of who we are and even saying like, oh, lawyer, that's what your kitchen looks like while you're taking this meeting here. Huh, this is, you know, or like, oh, you're, you know, you're home around and so you're wearing a sweatshirt instead of wearing your normal suit of, you know, just seeing that different side of people. And also, I think when we are able to come out of this, this different appreciation for connection and also a greater appreciation for the technology and the tools that we've had that we weren't taking advantage of. So I think all of those things are going to be good to hopefully balance out a lot of the hard things that are coming out of this time and actually happening for people. 
Yeah, I mean, I, th- I, I, I love that perspective. I think that um, if this becomes a catalyst for change in terms of putting the client back at the center of your practice, uh, being more responsive, reducing friction in the ways that uh, clients can interact with you, uh, making things easier for them in terms of whether it's e-signatures or online payments, uh, getting CRM in place so that you've got uh, regular automated touch points with clients. I think that those are all could really be positive things for uh, clients and the profession in general, because I think lawyers, in certain respects, their hand is forced, um, and so this is one of those innovator die moments. Uh, <laughs> yes. And the, you know, the firms that are embracing this stuff uh, and are able to provide great, remarkable service to clients, regardless of their location, are the ones who are going to be more likely to have a competitive advantage moving forward. Yeah, I love I love the innovator die perspective because um, so it's just fascinating because you know we're like watching TV and we're watching shows at home and one of the things that has just tickled me so much that I've been able to see is years and years ago I worked in the car business and um, I guess not that many years ago but anyway worked in the car business for a little while and it's so archaic. And reminds me a lot of the legal field and how stuck in the past and just kind of using all of these old systems kept going on and on, even though technology was available, you could innovate, you could do new things. And some people were uh, like there were companies like Carvana who are doing deliveries and car elevators to buy things. Anyway, so now we have seen all of these big car companies who've had to go in-person deliveries and buying your car totally online and negotiating totally online. And I just love that one of the great things will be innovate or unfortunately not. And uh, so I'm I'm excited to see all the innovation that will come out of this too. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, even outside of just the, the touch is legal, but not necessarily even just like the practicing lawyers, you know, this is going to be a catalyst. It already has been a catalyst in a lot of jurisdictions for the courts to make moves to be able to do more yes. online. Um, I know that some state legislatures are, Actually, I don't know if it was a legislative move or uh, order of the Supreme Court. That's a good question. In some states, they've even been waiving some of the requirements for like wet signatures. So uh, finding ways to get like notary done. And that and if that stuff sticks, like that is going to be massive changing in the landscape, uh, which for a positive in my view, right? I mean, there are some, there's going to be some iterative steps and there's, there's going to be some mistakes made and uh, but that's how it works. Like that's how we get better. Is we got to test new things, try new things, be mindful of the issues that are presented with this new stuff. But some major positive changes, I think, coming um, spurred, hopefully, that persist. Yeah, I'm hopeful that those new um, or uh, I guess innovating in the legal field will stick around after this with moving things to online. Because again, we've been talking about this stuff for so long now. It feels like because. I think it was two years ago or around there that I think a Canadian province will have to maybe fact check this, but I believe it was British Columbia. I think some traffic tickets and stuff, you could use an online system to go through and and fight those. And that, you know, so that stuff's been around. And so I'm, I'm hopeful that some of these new policies or procedures will stick around afterwards. And that will keep kind of innovating and using and, and doing new systems because it's available and it's the future people. Yeah. And again, my view is always if it makes life better for the client, if it makes life better for the legal services consumer, the potential client, that's what's going to win, right? The people that are online right now that are leading in their communities, conversations about, you know, whether it's just washing your hands and staying safe and social distancing. Some people, you know, I've seen firms that have put that kind of information even on their site because in their community, they're a source of trust. Um, They're on Facebook having those conversations. Those are the firms that are going to win in the end because, you know, that's where the consumers are. That's where people expect to be able to get information and, um, I've just I've always thought that is that if you think about what makes life easier for the client and where the client is and follow suit, that's the way to stay relevant. Yeah. 
All right. That is a great note to go into hearing from our sponsors. So we're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, and then we'll pick things back up after that. If you're missing calls, appointments, and potential clients, it's time to work with Nexa Professional more than just an answering service. Nexa's virtual receptionists are available 24-7 to schedule appointments, qualify leads, respond to emails, integrate with your firm software, and much more. Nexa ensures your clients have the experience they deserve. Give them a call at 800-267-9371 or visit them at nexa.com forward slash podcast for a special offer. And we are back. Okay, so I just thought of a question, another question for you. Uh, hey, Gee, during COVID-19 and quarantine, are people still building links? Ha! Huh. <laughs> yes, they are, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, one of the big ones that, uh, this, I, the concept, of, and again, this is, not, this is not new. This is just a different context for it, but... You know, if you put information on your site, if you're a local resource for testing, for announcements, you know, I know we talked about this before, but uh, the search engines are recognizing a new schema that are related specifically to COVID. So structured data markup you can put on your site uh, for announcements, for testing. If you put that information on your site, you know, are leading conversations about that, those resources get shared and linked to or or a video, right? So any, anything that you're doing that you're publishing on your site that is useful information in this environment to people, that's going to earn links. Uh, you know, people are talking about these issues on forum sites, their other uh, journalists are covering the topics, you know, there's all sorts of news and, and going to continue to be news about the intersection of legal issues related to COVID. And so if you're publishing on that, you should expect that you're going to be earning some, hopefully you're earning some links with, you know, not, I shouldn't say that because, you know, I rail against this idea of just write it and they will come because that's not how it works. But you got to start with being a leader, having a voice on this, publishing on it, and then getting that information out in front of an audience that's ready, willing, and able to link to your content and you will build links. Yeah, there you go. So talking about all these, you know, the different things or things that you want to continue doing, I want to like go back and reverse a little bit about, I know we talked about, or you, you mentioned not wanting to kind of be a shark or take advantage of, of things that are going on or, you know, have your messaging. How about SEM PPC spend right now? Where, what are your thoughts on whether people should use, be using that? Yeah. So it's a uh, same type of thing. I mean, I, I think the messaging matters, but you know, one of the, I know, uh, the WordStream people put out kind of a COVID state of paid search ads right now. And uh, I don't know if they've updated it, but last time I looked at it, the cost per clicks in certain categories were actually down. And that's a reflection of lawyers pulling out of the auction. So cost per clicks come down. Volume for a lot of the, you know, the types of queries that are really being impacted by COVID there's no drop off, so or the drop off is is smaller than what the drop off in the cost per click. So what's all that mean? It means that you can buy clicks cheaper than uh, you were prior to this time. But you know the, the question of should I be using should I be doing SEM PPC? Like that's a big question, regardless of whether or not it's COVID. But I will tell you this: like there is search volume. If your practice intersects with something COVID related. There is a lot of demand. There's a lot of intent demand right now for answers to those types of questions. So, you know, we talk about it in the context of landlord tenant. Uh, we brought up the financial issues. I mean, even there's there are criminal defense contexts that are relevant. There are issues that yes. are related. Yeah, I have heard that actually that um, car related accidents are kind of at least in Minnesota where I'm at are going through the roof right now because people are driving recklessly. Uh, they're drinking a lot more. And, you know, a lot of the driver services, they are kind of changing to maybe being grocery shoppers or that sort of thing, or they're just not working. And so there are, um, there are there things that are going to need to be, you know, lawyers in criminal defense are going to be busy coming out of this. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, you know, sadly, a lot, a lot in the family context, there's also, you know, having people cooped up together for long periods of time 
doesn't necessarily bode well for people's uh, psychology. And so there are going to be a lot of issues that come out of those that those circumstances. And so, you know, again, I think the, the uh, traffic one's a great example, too, of like, uh, there's a presumption and this is this is that fear thing, right? I'm a motor vehicle accident lawyer. Nobody's on the road anymore. So I'm going to pull out of all of my advertising because driving's down. Well, guess what? Driving's down. Accidents are up for a lot of the reasons you said. And, you know, I think um, that's the thing you've got to be careful about is that if your if your firm does th- that type of work, you really need to keep your ear to the ground uh, so that you don't make these decisions out of, you know, just like knee-jerk reactions to being scared that the market's going away. So there's opportunity there. It all comes back to the same thing, which is who do you serve and what are the issues they're dealing with? And, you know, if those issues relate to, they still have to drive because some people are still out there, you know, the stuff's still moving around. They're still essential workers and um, you know, and sadly too, I guess I don't want to get too uh, political about this, but there there are places in the country that are not taking quarantine very seriously. And so, anyway, the point is, is like to know your audience and then tailor your message to those types of things that you can help with that relate to the things that are on their mind. Yeah, love it. What else, Guy? What else have you got? What else do I have? Um, you know, one of the other big <laughs> questions that you know, a lot of people have been bringing up, and again, I think it's somewhat misplaced, but this idea of like, should I totally change my practice because of, um, you know, I was in one area and I don't think that that's going to be an area. And so I'm going to just jump into like bankruptcy or something. And, you know, I think you end up doing a lot more damage both to your own firm as well as potentially uh, messing things up for clients. On the other hand, if you've had experience doing bankruptcy and that just hasn't been a major focus, like maybe you can shift some of your messaging to, uh, revitalize that part of the practice. Uh, I think the other thing, though, is is that, and again, this is one of those things where we've been talking about it forever, find ways to partner with other lawyers that don't necessarily do the same thing. Because if you, if you have an audience and uh, you are a trusted source of information, you know, finding other firms, other lawyers, not uh, people that aren't lawyers, but maybe other professional services providers, you know, accounting people or financial people to do content with, to partner with, to have messaging with, I think that's a much better approach to dealing with what might be a downturn for your practice than to try to reinvent your practice overnight for, again, hopefully something that, you know, we're in the at least somewhat return to normalcy over the next months, if not in the new year. Yeah. And I, you know, I just, just as you were saying, this popped into my head of trying to work with other people. Um, I don't, I shouldn't maybe speak to you at a turn because I don't know exactly how law clerk or these other services work or hire an Esquire, but you know, there is a potential, you know, a possibility, I will say that, uh, if you have experience in other practice areas, you could jump into using, those services for yourself to kind of, if your practice area is quiet now of trying to help out some other firms and be maybe like a temporary associate or something. Totally. I, I mean, know. I think it's all that, all that stuff should be, uh, I don't know if you can hear my toddlers, but they're, I can, they're, they're excited right now. I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> But the uh, yes, I think exploring those options and and making adjustments at your practice. I just get concerned when I see the advice of, you know, again operating from a place of fear. Drop everything, start over. For all the reasons that we've talked about, I, just, I think that, that you got to be careful with that. Um, yeah, and I think I mean we've hit on this so much during this episode, but it's at least seems clear to me that there are so many practice areas, if not almost all, that you can transition to something else. You can kind of pivot your messaging. You can adapt it for what's going on in this time. Unless you your calls have totally dried up, unless you don't have anything that um, that you're able to kind of keep paying yourself and your employees, there seem to be a lot of ways that you can kind of, you can shift. Yeah, no, I, your practice area. Yeah, I, I think that there are, you know, most practice areas, your potential clients are dealing with some COVID life issue that relates somehow to how you help them. Now, of course, there are some practice areas that just don't, right? I mean, um, I think we were talking to some people in the uh, financing space where, yeah, it's literally things are frozen for them. There's just, they're, clients aren't doing anything right now. And so that might be much more of a just stay close, check in with them, 
be top of mind, but not the same, you know, there's not a, a pivot there to provide them service in that, in that context. But, um, you know, I just think that the, it, it's not a time to retreat. This is a time to be out there, be a leader, keep, you know, keep creating and another, oh, here's another one that came up. So forget about, I mean, marketing we use so liberally, but people have been networking right through zoom happy hours. Uh, so if you're part of an organization, get that organization on the virtual meeting. Don't just say we're shutting down all of our networking and um, those kind of events. Take those events virtual. Uh, take the networking and the socializing virtual so that you are staying top of mind with folks. Yeah, I like that. Have you, um, another thing that I just wanted to ask you, since you're, you are active in a lot of, um, a lot of groups and you're, you know, your Twitter master. Um, are, <laughs> I mean, really, uh, you're a prolific tweeter. Um, <laughs> are you seeing that people are starting to feel a little bit calmer, a little bit more settled into this time? Or, you know, is it kind of just all over the board? Yeah, it's all over the board. I, you know, I think that people are adapting. So, you know, the conversations we had 30 days ago were much more, uh, a lot more uncertainty. And, um, you know, people were dealing with the issues we talked about, like, uh, how do I even interpret this shelter in place? Does that mean I can still work if it's from home? And we're through that initial wave, but there's still a lot of uncertainty, right? So there's still, you know, here in Illinois, we're under lockdown until the end of uh, April right now. We don't know if that's going to be extended. We think it's unlikely that it's going to be shortened. And so, there's still a lot of trepidation. And of course, there are people that, you know, we're talking to people who are directly impacted, whether they're getting sick themselves and recovering, or they have a loved one who is gone is going through it, um, or they have coworkers who are going through it. And so that when, it, when it, it strikes close to home, when someone's getting you know, seriously sick, uh, or, um, you know, in the tragic event that they pa- pass away from this, those are serious, issues. And so there's still a lot of, um, you know, sorry, my, the toddlers are (laughs) really going crazy right now. I mean, this, interestingly, this is, I just was thinking about having a, having a succession plan for your business at this point in time, for your law firm of being able to say, all right, there's, you know, pandemic going on. This is reality. Now I need to plan for what's going to happen to my clients or my employees if, any of us get sick and just making sure that everybody has access to all of the things that they need to in case you're down and out for a long time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, that's another context where it's like, whether it's estate planning or business succession planning, all of those issues are issues that, you know, people might've had it on the back burner that are brought to the forefront now that they're having to face some of it. Yeah. And at, at attorney sync, I know we had, we had plans, you know, we did a lot of password sharing and we had plans for if someone was out of the office, passing the baton of this person's going to do the work or that person's going to do it and just making sure that there was a lot of communication going on. So thinking about those things for your team, if you have a team of who's going to do the work, if you or someone else isn't able to. Exactly. All the, all the good things to think about. Wow. We covered a, a lot of COVID ground today. We did. We did for uh, my potentially last ever lunch hour at legal marketing. Hopefully I'll be able to come back, but uh, I also just want to make sure I tell everyone out there, thank you so much for coming along on the ride with us through the last two years of doing lunch hour legal marketing. And I've appreciated getting all the requests to be on and the feedback and the questions and just the support when we're out and about and having people say, Oh, I, I love that podcast. So thank you, everyone. Really do. And you will be uh, very much missed, but we, I think we'll have you back if you're willing to do it. Um, <laughs> and we wish you nothing but success with your new venture and, and tell people where they can find you at your new venture. Yeah. Um, shoot me an email, Kelly at work well, wherever. Um, I've kind of transitioned most of my social media over to LinkedIn as well. So you can just look up Kelly Street on LinkedIn and I'm sure you'll find my uh, photo or work well wherever on there as well. Thanks so much. And thank you, listeners. As always, if you have questions or feedback or topic ideas, please don't hesitate to reach out. 
we're excited for the next chapter of the show and you as our audience make the show what it is. So please do reach out. And if you haven't done so already, please feel free to subscribe to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing at all of the places that you subscribe to podcasts, including Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and various yeah. others. And wow, they're really getting after it. <laughs> Feedback provided by James and Alexandra. <laughs> Mostly Alexandra. I don't know what's going on with her. Aww. But we'll find out. Thank you for listening to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. If you'd like more information about what you heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via Apple Podcasts and RSS. Follow Legal Talk Network on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And or download the free app from Legal Talk Network in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, or subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.